Hey everyone, welcome back to another devlog. Before we get into anything, I'd like to say that my Patreon has been updated, and anyone that would like to support me and my dream of working on my game full time, then head over there and check it out. There are a lot of tiers where you can get some pretty exciting rewards. I really appreciate anyone for even considering it, and I'll have a link in the description. Now on to the exciting stuff. So this week, I wanted to talk about my game's art. Stylized art is my favorite look for games and was the easiest decision I made before the game's development. I drew a lot of inspiration from games like Sea of Thieves, Breath of the Wild, and also another fellow indie developer's game called Lucin. All these games have amazing art, and I knew that the people involved had a lot of experience for me to learn from. After watching tons of videos and looking at screenshots for what felt like hours on end, I felt like I was ready to get started. First off, just a little disclaimer, I am completely self-taught, I do not have a degree in any game design or game art, and I might not be doing some things the correct or most efficient way. There are a lot of other great indie developers that do have schooling and a degree in some of these topics, and they are probably much better to learn from. But those interested in my workflow, here it is. So as a solo developer, I have to budget my time when creating assets. So the workflow changes based on how important or how often I think the player will come across them. That being said, environment assets around the world, such as the grass, trees, and rocks, get a lot more time and attention compared to little props such as stools and buckets and so on that are being placed around. To save a lot of time, all of my assets are basically a low poly model with a pre-created texture that I made in Substance Designer, and sometimes I might even add a normal map to help give it a little bit more detail. When creating anything, I always start with a base model in Blender by usually just pulling and squeezing the default cube around until I have a low poly version of what I'm trying to achieve. After that I go in and try to exaggerate parts of the model to give it that stylized look. Usually this means scaling and rotating random ends to give it some character and then going in and adding some loop cuts and rotating them around to make things look bent and worn. Actually Ryan Stevenson, the art director over at Sea of Thieves, had a great talk about making the art for that game and he said that if a model didn't fit their style, he would say to make it look wonky and add some dinks, and I found this to always work for me. Once the model is created, I will UV map it so that the texture and the gradient will work correctly on the model. Thankfully, I don't have to get too crazy with the UV map because my texture usually still looks pretty good when being slightly stretched. After making the model in Blender, I will export it straight to Unreal, and either create or use a pre-existing material instance to give it color and texture. For my textures, I have four different base textures that were all made in Substance Designer with two maps and a slope blur grayscale node. I also have three different smaller textures that were made the same way but can be overlapped on top of the first one in case I wanted to add more detail and variation in the model. All of the textures are in a grayscale so that I can quickly create a gradient map in Unreal Engine to mess around with the material and this is how I can use only one texture and still get many colors without having to switch back to designer every time I want to create something with a new color. For the lighting, I try to make it look colorful and exaggerated to give it that stylized feel. Some of the quickest ways of doing this is changing the temperature of the sunlight, or directly messing with the light's color. I try to go for more warm and vibrant look, so bringing the temperature scale lower always works for me. Next, I place in a sky atmosphere to give it that very bright blue sky and add some more colors onto the scene. If you wanted to add even more, you could always go through your post-process volume and change a lot of settings in there. I personally don't change much in there, but I do enable ambient inclusion in some areas such as cliffs and rocks. But I don't want all of my assets to have ambient inclusion or else it would remove that soft and kind of cell shaded look. Removing ambient inclusion is a lot simpler than it seems. You can honestly just go into the material 
and where there's the spot for ambient occlusion, you can place a scalar parameter, give it a value of zero, and just hook it up. Lastly, I know this was a shorter devlog, but over the last three weeks since the last one, there hasn't been much to talk about. I spent a lot of time creating models and sculpting a lot of the terrain, so I thought some people would enjoy seeing a deeper look into how the game is made, and if you did enjoy, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and maybe we can somehow make it into YouTube's magic algorithm. I'm also still streaming over on Twitch every weekday, Monday through Friday starting at 10am, and I'll have the link for that in the description. Thank you everybody for watching. And thank you to Key Was Taken and Midnight Pixel for your support on my Patreon. I really appreciate it. I hope everybody has a great day. Goodbye.